Say, kids, what time is it? It's kind of like watching TV, but, you know, in your car. 104.7 The Cave, Mike the Intern in Virtual Land yeah, this morning you, with Jay Stevens. Is, are you on Mars? I am on Mars. Mars. That's actually where I live, on Mars. Isn't that incredible? Hang on. Dark Side of the Stream, episode let me see 73 more comfortable it's hot in here god why is it yeah. so hot in well here? hey jay jay was like you're you're not you're not feeling very well you know what you need to do put on some black clothes so guess yeah. what jay yeah. I put on some black clothes and i'm feeling 100 well, percent. i wouldn't want a beanie too i didn't know we were taking that route but it's all right <laughs> I, I didn't want to look like antifa i guess <laughs> it, would, it would be the same beard no beard beard no beard uh this is dark side of the stream where we Watch movies. movies. Documentaries. So you don't, yeah, have, you don't have, to. have to. This is episode 73. It was uh, Jay's pick this week. And it's called The Bones Brigade. It was uh, a little uh, direct- peek into my, my childhood. My childhood you know, was all based around skateboarding. Yeah, uh, So that's that's a great place where I want to start. Because Jay, if you did not know, grew up California, Hawaii, kind of both places. But, he, but he's a California dude, if you don't know this. And me, I grew up in the Midwest. I was born in Joplin. I grew up in Cape Girado. I finished high school here in Springfield. So it, growing up for me was all sports related. I played college. I played basketball, church league. I played baseball. I played hockey. I played soccer. I played football. I, I mean, I, I think I had some friends that skateboarded, but like I was so ingrained into sports yeah, that I, I never, think, I, I never had here, skateboarding wasn't a big thing because uh, it wasn't at all hand in hand, you know, it wasn't really until like, I, I mean, there, like I said, I had some friends that did skate, but I, it wasn't until the Tony Hawk video game series came out that I think like across the board, everyone was just like, Oh man, skate, whether you could balance on a board or not, you definitely could pick up a controller and play Tony Hawk. So um, where I'm going with this is it was really cool to kind of see I, not only where you were at in your childhood, because skateboarding in California was as as important as you hear about, like, you know, traveling baseball teams and yeah. and uh, gymnastic yeah. teams and, and volleyball teams in this area where these kids are like just like ingrained to like be professionals at what they do. Skateboarding was the same way, but in California. And I didn't really re- I mean, again, I didn't even really know that they had put teams together. I had heard of the Bones Brigade before. But I, I never, I didn't know like it was that serious of a thing. Now and it's kind of like the birth of X Games, really. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. these guys are they, they're just trying to see what was possible on a skateboard and just pushing each other, which was just excellence in anything is uh, is just amazing to watch. You know, it develop. You know, yeah. Um, we'll start with Stacy. Um, if you don't know, he's he's part of the Z Boys, um, and that was a group of guys in the uh, '70s that were a bunch of kids that kind of made skateboarding at least at that time period popular it was a little bit more regionally than it was nationally like what tony hawk was able to do later on down the line but those dudes from venice um really did some some pretty cool stuff one of the guys in that stacy who is the director of those movies and documentaries and also the bones brigade was the one movie too yeah yeah, lords of dogtown and all that stuff he was the one that directed this documentary, but he's also the one that put this team together. And right out of the gate, I, I have to give Stacy Peralta like all the credit in the world because it, it, early on in the documentary, he said, you know, I wanted to put a team together and I wasn't looking for like the best of the best. I mean, yeah, I wanted good skaters, but there was just something else I was looking and I wanted them young because I felt like I could develop them. Now, at first you're like, uh, I don't know. But dude, Stacy, Stacy was like an a dad to these kids. And yeah, and he had a good vision, business vision too. Like oh, yeah. A lot of the other skaters didn't have a business vision. He had a business vision, you know. And they were making, I mean, what, 30 million a year at their height? When that was at out of point, the gate. Yeah. At one and, point, and, it was crazy. And and uh, big props to Stacy because he could have at any point exploited these kids, you know, uh take advantage of them because they're kids, they don't know any different, but from the get-go even as early, even when they were teenagers, he was making sure they got paid. And he, and what led to the the company that he was a part of splitting up was he was like, look, these kids are going to go off on their own anyway. I want to support them. And that's what we do. Obviously his business partner is like, I'm looking out for my business, yeah, not theirs. Yeah, yeah. And that is where the exploitation would happen. Stacy's like, no, screw you. I'm done. So Stacy, if you're listening, man, props to you, dude, because not only were you able to kind of keep these kids grounded and you took care of them, 
but you also were able to kind of hoist them up. You know, I always say the best thing that you can do as a person and a human being is, yeah, you want to take care of your business, but you always want to make sure and push everyone around you up. You want to always hoist everyone around you and that you care about up, whether it's coworkers or family members, friends or whatever. And Stacy did that. And I mean, yeah. he was a good skater, but I think he was an even better person. And I better, got that out of this uh, document. Better businessman and better like uh, team leader, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and there were so many times where like Tony and Rodney were talking about like, you know, going through what kids, I, I can't even imagine the pressure. Yeah, can you imagine kids. being, you know, 12 years old and all that weight on your shoulders? You're the pressure. best in the world. And you yeah. got to go back out and do it again in six yeah. months and keep that trophy. And, and you know, he, he handled it like, like a, 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 a really awesome dude. And so, you know, normally in these, in these things that we do, we're like, ah, this guy, you're, dirt you, bag. you yeah, suck. Dirt bag. You're no, a dirt bag. You, you dirt bag. And Mike Biggest gets on Dave. here. Biggest Dave. Yeah. Mike gets really pissed off and yells and, 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 and slams his fist down and stuff, but not on this dark side of the street. Well, I'm man. glad you got something out of this one. Cause I knew it wasn't really your style, this one, but I, I, I would just, Anything that's got a story of like uh, American dream or like uh, striving for excellence, I just get down on those kind of stories, you know. I, I and, and I'm glad I'm glad you kind of showed this to me. We'll get into more of uh, the Bones Brigade next. Dark side of the stream on 104.7 The Cave. 104.7 The Cave. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens. We are back in the studio discussing Dark Side of the Stream episode 73. The Bones Brigade. Now, as I mentioned in the last break, this was a really good insight into California in the 80s and what uh, initially would have become the explosion of skateboarding. Now, it was really interesting. I did not know that Tony Hawk's dad was like a big skater dude that, you know, got because when you get into Tony's story, it, it's really you, you, all you know is the video games and that Tony Hawk is like one of the best, one of the greatest of all in the world. Time. Ever, yeah. He's like the, he's the man. Um, and, um, you know, and, uh, he had a tough time dude, because in, and they get into that, like all these other skater dudes, you know, the punks and stuff, they look at this clean cut kid, with right? The, he's a good blonde kid. hair. Most of the skateboarding guys, like the ones that the first generation of skateboarders, like was where, with the ones my dad was around. I mean, those guys, we know smoking weed, drinking beer, partying, leather jackets. They didn't want this clean cut kid, you know, coming around and trying to, trying to beat them. And he's destroying them, destroying, destroying them. them. Destroying. Um, I mean, like not even funny and he would get spit on, he would get made fun of. They hard, they rashed him hard, man. And he just kept coming back and saying, well, I'm going to prove it with my skating. Yep. And he did it over did and it. over and over and over and over again. Still doing it today. He's still doing it still. Uh, and, and, it, and it was just, it was a really good, it was a really cool thing to see where he was at that point and how, you know, uh, how he he dealt with it, and again back to what Stacy what Stacy did for these guys. You're right; they could have been out, you know, messing with girls, drinking. They were on their own. They had one adult, you know, supervisor who Gosh, was like, know, right? "Money." But you know. but you got all these other skater dudes that were like, "I hated these guys." I, you know, they were they were like clean cut, blah blah blah. They but and we'd be out partying, and they'd be they'd be sleeping with their boards, man. Well, yeah. that goes to Stacy. He he he's the one who said you don't have to do all this stuff. You can just do what you do. And they, he found guys that love skating above everything else. And I think it was Mountain. I think it was Lance Mountain who said, you yeah. know, um, what happens is when, when these things that you do that you're passionate about, whether it be skateboarding, sports, music, whatever, when that stops fulfilling that need, that's when drugs and women and booze start to come in because you're not getting that from that, that thing you love anymore. Yeah, yeah. And, you're looking for more more highs and more, more uh, you know, wild times and he he would hit it right on the money um and lance what a man at the end whenever they were talking about oh god i almost got teared up when they yeah. were like talking about it and he was just like you know i shouldn't even i shouldn't even been there yeah. but they let Very, me be great, there god i was just like oh man and those guys loved him it wasn't that he was but they they did make a really good point to talk about those videos that they made with the uh, bones brigade and Dude, how lance videos, was kind of like when those were coming out it was i was in you know high school, ninth grade or whatever. And I was in Hawaii. So I was kind of isolated at that point when those videos were coming out, I was the first guy to order those videotapes and me and my buddies would watch. And then literally like rewind, watch everyone and then run outside and try to do the tricks and then run back inside and try to watch what we were doing videotapes, you know, how much yeah, did you those, have to pay for though? How much were they? I think they're about 30 bucks or something like that. God, you know? 30, yeah. Man, that's yeah, so I mean, crazy. Teenager, you know, Oh man. Oh, but, dude, can you think 
that was a life, man. That was a life. Well, and, and, and on to your point, um, that's the thing about Lance that was cool because you look at Tony and you look at Rodney Mullins and you're like, holy mother of God, there's yeah, no like way. Freaks, I mean, when they when, when they first did like the 360, um, you know, Lance was talking about how he, it took him a month to yeah. get it right. And when a he month did, of he eating fin- it, a month of yeah, eating it, eating, falling down constantly. And then he said he finally did it and he just took his board and smashed it. <laughs> Because he was so like, just he's so mad that it took him a month to do it. But the point is, what Lance Mountain did was he made it accessible to guys like you yeah, that were yeah. eating the stuff up. That were like, "There's no way I'm going to be able to do a you know a 360 or whatever, an ollie, no touch, whatever the hell you want to call it." But what Lance is doing and what Lance did was skating in front of it. He was like, "Oh, you can skate anywhere. Yeah, you don't have to have a pool. You don't have to yeah. have some broken down ramp. Really? You don't have to have. You could literally grab your board and go. And I, and, and I, I think that have, was brilliant. The, I drove I drove a little beat up Toyota truck in eleventh uh, grade, I guess it was, and I would carry in the back two little jump ramps that we made out of wood. I drive, drive around with them, so whenever we we stop and party somewhere, we just pull them out and just start skating on them. You know, and 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 that's what Lance did, which was we would was steal so wood. Cool. We'd go and steal wood to build half pipes in the middle of fields. We built a ramp at a Buddhist cemetery in Hawaii. We we went one guy. Had I don't know about that. Brother, I don't know about that karma, dude. An older brother had a truck. We went. They used to be called midnight runs to the lumber store. You go to the lumber store at midnight when it's closed. One guy hops the fence and starts passing two by fours and, and under the board. Then you start passing plywood sheets. You steal all the wood for a ramp, drive off, and then you go and find a field somewhere and you just steal hammers, whatever you can find, build. No plans. We were just hammering, building. Built a half pipe at a Buddhist cemetery in Hawaii, and it stayed there forever. The Buddhists didn't care, I guess. You just just kept going back to it, man. Yeah. What a what a crazy see. But again, that goes back to what I said in the beginning. Uh, this was a really really good insight into uh, you know that that lifestyle that a lot of people, especially growing up in the Midwest. You know, we play football, we play baseball, yeah. we play yeah, basketball. It was, you know, you knew guys that skated, but there was like what four guys in high school or in your class that actually knew how to skate. Um, at least when I was growing up. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, that that all changed. And we'll talk more about the Bones Brigade next dark side of the stream on 104.7 The K. 104.7 The K. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio uh, discussing the Bones Brigade episode 73 of Dark Side of the Stream. Now, let's turn our focus to Rodney. I was Holmes. just going to say the same thing. I <laughs> let's stop for a second and talk about this cat, man. Because here's a cat that... You find something you're good at, and but also you've got some some strict parenting. This cat, he devotion. He starts off where I mean he talks. He's got to be autistic or something, right? uh, There's something. I I, maybe maybe not. I I don't know. There's something very weird. He definitely had a very very tough strict upbringing, and I think that played into his favor as far as his discipline. With learning his craft, being focused on his craft, he got so lucky that someone saw him and called Stacy and said, "Hey, you got to fly this guy out." I mean, the guy was—he's like living in Florida, middle middle of nowhere. Better than anybody, like things that nobody would even think of doing. This dude was doing just made it up himself. And it wasn't—it's not like skating in the sense where you think of you know you get on a ramp and you go up and down and do these flips and crazy things, or you you know jumping off curbs and cars and whatever. Rodney, what Rodney did was literally like he could skate in, on a square patch of yeah. concrete because he would do things where he would ride on the side of the board or in the back and he would just Flip do these like ollie around. tricks. Oh. There all are so many these kids do nowadays, you know, it, he manuals. All, he did it all up. Yeah. And, and he, the, there are literally words in, in Webster's dictionary yeah. that he created based on what he had to say. Well, this, this is what we called this trick. Yeah. This is what this trick was or what, yeah, whatever it is. Trip. I mean, it's just so out of out the out the box what he was able to do with. It's kind of like when you see you know these kids that are given like really bad instruments and then just focus and focus and focus and focus and then can make just beautiful sounds coming out of things where people will be like, "There's no way you could do that." And then you see him do it, and you're like, "Okay, I'm an idiot, and I'm not very good at what I do." Rodney was that type of guy. He also, I can imagine, was very difficult to deal with sometimes in the sense that there was that story about how he said he was going to get sick and they were yeah, going to a demo he just left and the guys just wait waited for him and it was obvious like they they knew the deal 
Like they all were just like, they, but again, it goes back to Stacy, man. Had Stacy not been the one to be like, look, I, I'm, I'm going to be in charge of these guys. I'm going to be their mentor. I'm going to get them on the right path. He did exactly that. And he stuck with him and he was there for him. And, Imagine you know, just convincing these kids, parents too. Hey, Oh yeah. Kid. Can you go into his dad and say, Hey, we're going to take this kid cross country in this day and age. There's no way anybody's no. going to let some dude who's like 10 years old and her kids take their kids off across the country in a little beat up VW. It'd be like Jay Stevens showing up to your house, knocking yeah. at your door. Hey, Hey man. Uh, yeah. I saw I'll your kid, your kid playing bass. Door. I saw your kid playing bass at the school of rock. We're going to put a band together. And we're just going to go through the Midwest and we're going to play all these dive bars, man. But I'm telling you, they're great. And they're, I mean, yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. Dad's going to say, all right, Jay, throw them in the van. Go. No, there's no way. That was the one thing I was like, how did he convince these parents to let him fly out (laughs) teenagers to California and then go tour the state? But then you look at the money and I mean, ultimately with Rodney, you know, at every turn when his dad was like, you're done. And then he'd see what would happen. He'd go, okay, okay, okay. You're right you know this you have to have this you have to have this and and he he admitted you know his dad was strict he wasn't a bad parent but you know very 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 strict upbringing and uh, but again that played into his his thing i loved what he said though about their contribution and he's like you go into like a library and you see these books you know war and peace and and all these like classics that that changed the world and now they're just sitting there and they're collecting dust no one's going to read them. No one knows anything about them. But then you look at what we were able to bring into the world and we essentially in a way changed it yeah. and they're right. And, and, and you, it's undeniable whether you look at, you know, you go into the mall and you go to a skate store, you see all the clothes and all these brands and all what these kids are wearing and doing. It, it's a culture and it is, it, and it's undeniable what, what they did and what they brought to the sport. And I think it's, it's a very cool story that everyone should take the time and watch because yeah. It gives you an insight into what they were into, whether you like skateboarding or not. I I could barely yeah, it's it's, it's about go more than skateboarding. It's about just yeah. like uh, 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 you know, like I said, people that that misfits dedicated to one thing and went off to change the world. You know, and and, whether, and they, kids, not yeah, not kid, people. We're talking kids, teenagers, yeah, kids, teenagers with one really badass adult who kept them focused and kept them on the straight and narrow. And uh, I think Stacy again, man, it, it really comes. I mean, yes, he found the talent and it was those kids doing it, but really without him, none of this would have been possible in my yeah. opinion at all. We will uh, come back with our reviews and what we're watching next week. Dark side of the stream returns next on 104.7, the cave. 104.7, the cave, Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens skating back in. It's I'm, unfortunate because I'm I really wanted, a half pipe as we speak. I really wanted him to bring his skateboard or his skateboard into the studio. I was going to bring do, it. If you would have been here off, in the studio, we would have gone to the parking lot. I know. We would have done parking lot and done some tricks. Uh, just like filming him today. doing ollies. But um, yeah, this is episode 73, Dark Side of the Stream. How many Bones uh, Brigade? How many, how many uh, ollies do you give this stuff? Oh, man? solid four. Solid, solid four. four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it didn't solid change the four. world, but it's just a great, great feel good story. It's a great so story. I'll give it a solid four. I, I tell people, I tell people I meet when I do the veteran lunch and the internships about what my favorite part of this job is. And that is I'm huge in the human connection. I'm big on the human story and I love making connections and I love hearing how individual life is to each individual. And, and that is, I think the core of what this documentary brings is, is like a human, a human connection thing, not like only the camaraderie with these guys felt with each other, but like, you know, Adver- just, overcoming adversity you know oh yeah 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 big time i mean coming up talk about from the bootstraps you know a lot of these kids came from poor areas of town you know and had nothing going for them you know one of them could have easily been in i mean in jail as much as the other guys yeah you know? it's like and, the, the previous generation some of the dog town guys you know one of those guys ended up joining a gang and then yeah and well that one up- that one dude with the gold teeth he kept coming on he's like every time i'd come out of jail tony hawk's yeah. like on a slurpee cup yeah and, and, see, and then he's got guys, his own video game guys, were the ones Tony Hawk looked up to. They were the pros when he was coming up, when he was a little kid. So they were the pros spitting on him, you know? But he was right in the sense that he well, said, Well, I'm glad you that know, you liked it because I thought for sure that you were going to be like, God, this is a dud. I hate it. No, 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 no. Again, I, 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 I'm big on the human connection. Whatever, if, if there, it was a documentary about a group of guys that got really good at digging ditches. If they had, yeah. there was a story and a human connection there, I'm in all day. And I thought it was good. And it was also really cool to see kind of that insight about where you were 
growing up in the 80s and what that what that was. And that if you're on the West Coast, then you Hopping know what we're talking about. Skating empty pools and yeah. all that stuff. That was I mean, yeah. we'd come home from school, grab our skateboards, meet up outside, and we wouldn't come back till it was dark. That's see, we did that, but we just did bikes around right. here. See, we just did it, was just, it was just you know? all bikes. It was bikes. Or you're going to some kind of sports practice once you got to a certain age, and that's just kind of what took over. Um, but yeah, it's solid four. Would you would you give it? Yeah, solid four for sure. Solid Didn't four. Oh, that was a great story. Yeah. Oh, that was good. It was a good lighthearted story that we definitely needed before we go into the next documentary, oh, no. which is dark? my pick. We are going to learn about the torso killer on Netflix, three episode series. Uh, it's, I think it's like times square killer, but he's also known as the torso killer, uh, in the seventies and eighties, very hardcore dude, very gruesome dude. And it's been a minute since we talked about murder. So I felt like it was definitely due time. We got a little, and I already, I already started watching this. We must be on the same page. I already started watching this and I was excited because it really talks about the history of porn as well. Awesome. You know, that I'm all about it. Pornography and murder serial killers. That's, exactly that's what we do. That's, that's what, what Mike and do. I do. It's dark. As always, you can watch us do this live Facebook, uh, 9 a.m. on Thursdays. And then, uh, on, uh, my show nine, J show at six, this is dark side of the stream reminding you that, we, we watch, watch documentaries, movies, so you, you don't, don't have, have to. to.